Right, can't remember where I got to with this, but regarding house refurbishment, I want to redecorate the hall. I want to get rid of the carpet, put the laminate flooring down and paint the room and do the various bits of preparation and repairing that need to be done to make this look nice. But in order to do that, I need to block off a doorway in the bathroom and to do that requires a bit of work in the bathroom, a bit of preparatory work in the bathroom. So I've started that. This is the door I've decided to remove. I used a model piece of modeling software that shows you what the room looks like, where you basically put the floor plan in and you can move things around and try things and see what looks good. In the end, I decided that the right-hand door looked better being removed, so retaining the left-hand door. If you put the door in the middle, it looks stupid. If you keep the door on the right, it's not that bad, but kind of, I don't know, a bit of a waste of space. Nice if we can get rid of this door, put the, a radiator behind it, and then we can put some pampas grass in that corner there, have a little bit of vegetation in the room. So. What have I done? I've removed the architrave from the outside of this door. Um, I'm gonna, I will say this kind of, in terms of the sort of bathroom renovation, I am keeping a list of all the prices because it is expensive, especially the things I've had to have done in this bathroom. Um, so I'm gonna keep a list so that it can be a good reference for people who are doing similar projects. I'm doing a lot of the work myself, apart from the electrics and the plumbing, um, which is a kind of change of direction. I was just gonna get somebody to do everything, but it's so expensive. I'm gonna do the work myself instead. So as you can see, I've stripped some of the wallpaper from out here as well, because when this is um, plasterboarded, it's going to require plastering. So this is not straightforward. Anyway, let me explain. I've had the I think as I've shown you, I hope I've shown you, I've had the um, Marley tiles and most of the bitumen backing removed from the floor, which was very expensive because this contained asbestos and there are pipes there that we need to move. Um, and to do that, you need to drill into the floor, which I didn't think a plumber would want to do with Marley tiles everywhere. I've also had the asbestos ceiling or the Artec ceiling, which contains a small amount of asbestos. I've had that removed. Um, as well. In total, that cost me one and a half grand, okay? Uh, and I had a quote that was two and a half grand for exactly the same work and went for the kind of uh, company that I trusted a little bit more actually when I met them and that were recommended by my local city council. So that company is called ID Asbestos in case you're in Norwich and you, you want somebody to do some work for you. So Another thing you might have sneakily noticed is that the wall is now missing from this room, the partition wall, so this is now one room. Now, a quick note, I removed this wall myself. Now, if you're removing a partition wall, you should get, I think it's planning consent, if that's what it's called, or building consent or something. Basically, the council send round somebody just to check that it's kind of not structural and that it's safe to remove the wall without causing damage. You're supposed to do that obviously if it's a structural wall. You're also supposed to do that if you are changing the function of a room as well. I'm not changing the function of a room here. This is all a bathroom. So, and I was 100% certain that this wasn't a supporting wall, 100% certain. And how am I so certain? because, and ignore all this because I had a car boot sale at the weekend, um, because the, the partition walls are this awful, awful material. This is two sheets of plasterboard with a sort of plaster glue, this isn't asbestos, a plaster glue holding these um, cardboard lattices between the two panels. So I'm gonna show you another profile that gives it, a, there we go, it's a bit more obvious there, isn't it? This is the cheapest, uh, least sound insulating, least heat insulating wall partition that exists, basically. Um, and it was used commonly in social housing and cheap housing by like Wimpy in the, um, I think in the 70s. And I got it in my bungalow, fantastic. Anyway, this is a non-load bearing material because you would not want to hold anything up using this. 
There are the only studs in these are to kind of loosely hold them to the frame of the house um, and to join panels together. So unbelievable really, still weighs a ton and I've got to get rid of it and it's expensive to get rid of it. I'm hoping I can take it to the dump. Nine quid for something like 50 litres or, you know, 50 cubic litres of plaster. But this obviously isn't just plasterboard. This is plasterboard with cardboard and skim all over it. So heaven knows if they'll take it. So I was able to remove that wall myself and see that it wasn't actually, I could tell it wasn't holding anything up, even though I'd looked it up and known that these walls aren't strong enough to hold anything up, it wasn't actually physically attached to anything with anything resting on it. Uh, it was just attached to the side here. You can see the channels where it was running along um, between that wooden post. Um, and it was it's running between this wooden post here. This wooden post here for this pillar and this wooden post doesn't actually go into the ground either. It kind of sort of rests behind that, um, whatever you call that noggin thing up there, but that's it. And somehow um, this is not, well, I was gonna say not too bad. It is pretty bad. If I bang this, it makes the door shake, okay? Um, but then, to be honest, I can bang any of my partitions and the doors shake. So um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of preparation work, maybe uh, bond that to the floor in some way. But obviously now that this wall is removed, we can see the soil pipe there, which I'm going to box in again because I didn't want to spend thousands of pounds having a, well actually I wouldn't have wanted a half height stack anyway. I think that looks a bit stupid. I think I'd either want no stack or the full stack because at least with the full stack and a box between them, it kind of makes these windows make a little bit more sense because there's two windows in this room. If you get rid of the stack, you'll be like, well, why is there a, why are there two windows? It's obvious that it was previously two rooms. So at least leave something in it to divide it. Um, it's left these um, radiator pipes on the floor. Actually, you can see these wooden slats, by the way, this is what the wall was kind of screwed into. The bottom of the wall was screwed into. Um, yeah, it's left these radiator pipes. There's a couple underneath this box as well. I'm in the process of, I'm gonna build a wooden frame. I'm removing the, um, whatever you call that, the door frame around the edge. And I'm putting um, new timbers in, CLS timbers, to build a kind of frame in there with plasterboard either side. I'm gonna put tile backing board on this side. Um, and I'm gonna screw it into those, to the wooden posty thing. I'm not, see this is, everyone's gonna tell me this is structurally unsafe, I'm sure they are. But I'm not going to screw or nail into the concrete because I think there are pipes under there and I don't want to burst them. So I've got a very strong um, construction adhesive and I'm going to glue the bottom part of the frame to the concrete floor and then just screw everything into these, um, into this post and the post on the other side because there is a post the other side of the door frame. I've rescued the architrave from this door so that I can repair the architrave on this side because this architrave wasn't complete on this side, so I need to reconstruct it. I, I may do that. I may actually, in the end, I was in Wix last night, I may just buy some new architrave and nail it on because um, it won't look that different inside the bathroom, will it? So my plan over the next, well, week really, is to try to build this frame, plasterboard it, put a little bit of insulation um, in there, putting tile backing board on this side, um, so that it, we can put some nice tiles on it and hopefully it'll be sturdy and apparently I don't need building consent for that either because I'm not changing the function of this room and it's not the way to look at it but it would be prohibitive cost and costly to have this kind of whole thing removed um, and a new plasterboard wall put in place with the door frame because they're not gonna be able to do that without removing this coving up here and probably this Artex. So yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. I'm working around a nightmare and trying to make the best of a bad situation, really. I think it'll be fine. At the moment, this door, this partition is only held up by magic at the bottom 
and virtual magic at the top. And yeah, okay, it's a little bit rattly. It always was, but when it's when it's secured, I think it'll be absolutely fine. And this is the timber that I've bought for that. Um, it's 38 by 60 something. Um, Nick's dodgy thing is that I can't actually have the timber this orientation in the doorway because this 63 or whatever is wider than the um, paramount partition as they're called. So I have to orientate it that way and get longer screws to go through. So that's what I'm about to go and get this morning. So once I've got this filled in, this door, um, I'm going to get the plasterer to come round and hopefully skim this side of the wall, fit a new plasterboard ceiling and skim that. And then I've got to get the electrician back to install spotlights in the ceiling. He was originally going to do an extractor fan as well. He advised me against an extractor fan that goes through the wall because he said they let in a lot of cold and they get dusty, that sort of thing. So he was going to put one through the soffit board, but guess what? The soffit board is an asbestos soffit board, so he's not going to be doing that. So he advised me to get a company in to install a roof vent or something. So, I mean, I, you know, let's be honest. If I had a ladder that tall and I wasn't scared of heights and I knew what I was doing, how much is it going to cost to put a little vent in between a tile up there? I hope it's not more than a couple of hundred quid, really, because I think that's just that would be extortionate. So once that's done, he can then install the vent into the bathroom. It's going to be winter before we know it. So I want to put some tiles on this so that I can get a towel radiator installed and have the plumber um, move the pipes to activate it to get it working. Then this will be a fully functional, albeit very ugly bathroom, um, which I'm leaving until I have finished decorating the hall. Then I will come back re and kind of investigate different toilets, man-sized toilets and um, sinks and showers and all that sort of stuff. Believe it or not, despite all the carnage going on in there, my actual focus is to get the hall done. What do you think of my harebrained scheme? Does it sound all right or do you think I'm a loon. I would genuinely be interested to know. Anyway, thank you to my loyal patrons who are scrolling down the screen now, especially George Foote, Jim McKay, Jennifer Jones and Rob Van Eden, who are extremely generous patrons. Do subscribe if you enjoy my videos and I shall see you next time for another one.